chair would now recognize the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Vesey, for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, I was privileged to see something very special back in December of 1995 in Texas high school sports history. Now, before you think this is a story of Friday Night Lights, it's not. This happened on the hardwood court of the Wilkerson Grinds Activity Center in Southeast Fort Worth. Four coaching legends on the court, all with 1,000 wins each. Morgan Wooten of DeMatha Catholic High School, Ralph Tasker of Hobbs High in New Mexico, and Bill Kruger of Clear Lake High School just outside of Houston, and Coach Robert Hughes Sr. of Dunbar High School located in Stop 6, Texas, they squared off in an extraordinary basketball game. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that of these four coaching legends, Coach Hughes has the most wins with over 1,300 victories. And Mr. Speaker, tomorrow, Friday, September the 8th, will mark another special moment in basketball history for Coach Hughes as he is inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts. Growing up in Fort Worth and having lived part of my childhood in Stop 6, I knew of Coach Hughes at a very young age. He was a legend before he retired. He is and was a master basketball strategist, coach, mentor to the boys he coached, and the most prominent ambassador for high school sports in the state of Texas. And when you'd go to a basketball game, a Dunbar basketball game, and watch Coach Hughes work his craft, you ended up watching Coach Hughes as much as you watched the action on the floor. I saw this as a player that not only played against Coach Hughes, uh, but also as a spectator and a fan for many, many years. Hugh, Hughes and his longtime trusted assistants, Leonidas Rambo, fielded some great teams to rack up over 1,300 victories. These wins were racked up at Dunbar High School and I Am Terrell High School, which was shut down after desegregation. Coach Hughes would pace the floor while his teams ran up and down the court with a swift pace. He usually gave them lots of latitude to make, uh, he usually gave them lots of latitude but when they made mistakes that he felt could have been avoided by using better judgment. It didn't matter if you were the star point guard or the sixth man. He would stand up from the bench and Coach Hughes always had his jacket unbuttoned. And with a look of disapproval on his face that was unmistakable, he would look down the bench and I'm going to say he would look down the, the bench with his signature look of, of tough love. And you knew that you were being pulled out the game. There wasn't anything that your mom or dad could do for you. And that was the type of coach that Coach Hughes was. Uh, coach Hughes earned the dedication of his players because of the excellence uh, that he expected each and every day. I'll never forget in one Whataburger tournament in Fort Worth when Dunbar was playing Oak Hill Academy from Mouth of Wilson, Virginia. Oak Hill had at least five or six guys that were all over six foot eight, three of which went on to major Division I careers, University of Virginia and, and, and Kansas. And everybody at the gym that night, because Coach Hughes didn't have anybody over six five, six six, and everybody thought that Coach Hughes was outmatched. But with superior rebounding, patience, and good shot selection, Dunbar won the game. I was there and I remember vividly remembering the audience being shocked but inspired by the victory, but no one should have been surprised. Once a reporter asked Coach Hughes who his favorite NBA player was, and it surprised everybody when he said Larry Bird was his favorite player. The reason why he liked Larry Legend? Rebounding, fundamentals, blocking out, scoring, the type of things that may not have been fancy but led to victories. But that's who Coach Hughes was. That was the kind of excellence Robert Hughes brought to coaching in Fort Worth ISD and boys basketball in the state of Texas. And due to that fierce competitive streak in Coach Hughes' Dunbar teams, they always made the playoffs. I will never forget one day Coach Hughes was quoted in the paper saying that the people that worked in the neighborhood, that worked at the various jobs around town at General Motors and Miller Brewery and, and Lockheed, that they would always save up their vacation time so they could go to the quarterfinal and regional games in Midland because everybody knew that Dunbar was at least going that far. And he could say that because it was true and his teams could back it up. And I'll never forget one year when Dunbar didn't make it that far and Coach Hughes shared his scouting report with another school, I believe it was Southwest High School, he shared his scouting report with the coach from Southwest of the team they were getting ready to take on in the playoffs because he felt that at least 
the other team in the Fort Worth Independent School District should have the chance to advance. That is the kind of class act he was on the court, and he still is off the court today. And the man that he made, Mr. Speaker, his former players include current winning high school basketball coaches, one of the top all-time assist leaders in high school and college sports history, James Cash, an I Am Terrell graduate who was the first black player in the Southwest Conference who went on to become the chair of the Harvard MBA program. And in a state known for its Friday night lights, Mr. Speaker, it's not a single other person in high school sports that exemplifies this like Coach Hughes. And so with this, I'm humbled with the opportunity to recognize the next member of the Basketball Hall of Fame, Coach Robert Hughes. Congratulations, Coach Hughes. Go Wildcats, go I am Terrell. Gentlemen's time's expired. Chair now recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. McClintock, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Two weeks